So hi everyone online and in here. Uh, we are presenting the CO3. It's really a pleasure to be here with the, this um, project from another call. The one on the social contract is uh, we're really honored to be here and thanks so much for organizing this wonderful opportunity. I'm of course also a pleasure, so <laughs> So it's, uh, for me it was very exciting to get both of these projects uh, through and while Mikko and Teresa and, and Ruta were working really hard on, on finishing the uh, pledge, uh, we were working really hard with them on finishing the CO3. We always need just a couple of people to do that kind of task. In here. So uh, my name is in the Apollo Network as a data application pro program, a research program the director at the University of Helsinki and this also brings some of these, uh, my research interest to both of these projects. And then Rwanda, you can continue from here. Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you Christiane for organizing this, uh, this so special meeting where we can find synergies. As Cristiano said, I'm Vanama Diaz. I'm a researcher here at Center for Social Studies, uh, teaching uh, uh, um, assistant professor at Faculty of Arts and Humanities in the field of European Studies. And I will briefly guide you to uh, our main goals in this project and the Pro3 uh, model. So basically, our consortium is composed of uh, 10 partners. Okay, so it's led by University of Helsinki, so it's, it's uh, that, that um, uh, board is a bit updated, right? No, it's I mean, it's, uh, it's because uh, for the first three have, month, uh, we six have months, we have a shared uh, coordination. So yeah. for the first month, uh, the, the leading partner will be the University of Helsinki, and then the Demon Research Institute also <laughs> from Trilla will follow up with uh, the management of these approaches. We also partner with uh, Uppsala University, Center for Social Studies, the Center for Liberal Strategies Foundation, uh, um, Fulda University of Applied Sciences, Istanbul Big University, and uh, the Faculty of Political Science, here, uh, Science of the University of Zagreb, the American University of Paris, and uh, the Ukrainian Catholic University in Ukraine, with, which is still in the process of joining uh, uh, officially uh, these consortia. So 10 partners cover nine countries across uh, uh, across Europe. Um, and the, the, the particularity of this uh, consortium uh, is that this organization bring a different but a rather complementary epistemological and methodological expertise. Uh, as you can see in these boards, so we cover fields uh, as different but complementary as political science, uh, history, uh, uh, policy, uh, European studies or studies on the European Union, and uh, anthropology, methodological, we uh, quantitative methodologies and quantitative uh, methodologies. Uh, we have partners, experts in uh, building scenarios and, of course, in dissemination uh, uh, science or communicating science. Um, and this is fundamental to uh, the implementation of Code 3. Uh, interdisciplinary research on historical and contemporary contestations around social contracts, which lays the, the groundwork for building more resilient social contracts, uh, contracts in the face of future challenges. So, as far as the co, uh, 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 co tree model uh, goes, uh, we fall from this idea that the concept of social contract refers to the uh, imagined uh, agreement between community members, right? So there's a lot already been said uh, about this. So for us, understanding <coughs> social contracts requires analyzing how definitions and practices, this is very important, shape their scope, implementations and resilience in the face of social transformations. Uh, so it needs context, uh, context sensitivity and the ability to shift perspectives between different settings. So it needs to bring this sensibility uh, to the thinking of past, present and future social contracts. Uh, the EU uh, funded uh, Code 3 project aims to develop and promote a social contract model that is more democratic, more inclusive and more open. Um, and this will, or our work will, or envisages too, 
uh, uh, demonstrate political and social resilience uh, when faced with significant social health challenges, crises, and anti-democratic tendencies that are spreading across uh, uh, across Europe. In terms of case studies, and I will um, follow up on this, uh, the, the consortium will study eight uh, uh, EU member states and three non-member uh, states of the uh, of the European Union to identify safeguards and mechanisms that promote, or that are trying to promote, resilient social contracts supporting citizen involvement uh, in democracy in Europe and therefore an active citizenship. In terms of uh, implementation or the structure of the country model, uh, we start with uh, an important uh, definition or organization of timescales and uh, dimension, which are mainly three. So we have a long-term uh, uh, dimension or time scale that aims to look at original social contracts. And here we go to you know uh, early modern uh, political thought from Hobbes to Locke and uh, Rousseau, and uh, to this idea that social contracts have been understood as a one-time hypothetical event something that is crystallized in one specific moment and that it's, it's settled. So we're going to understand and review this, this literature uh, to adapt this idea uh, to propose that all social contracts are rooted in an identifiable historical moment, which is the ratification of the respective uh, constitution. But then we analyze this original uh, contract uh, on a critical level to uh, um, shed light on its variation over time. Uh, so any apprehension of a social contract must analyze, and we try to, we'll try to do that, uh, long-term debates about the origin, uh, original establishment of collective contract on the long term. We then follow up with a mid-term approach, uh, which focuses on the open social contract, so to this idea that even if settled at a specific moment, social contracts uh, evolve uh, in articulation with context and interests of uh, citizens and political uh, and political actors, but also the idea that these social contracts need to be renewed and adapt to several crises and specific uh, events that occur in the society. Finally, uh, a short-term approach, uh, time-wise, uh, refers a focus on a resilient social, this idea of a resilient social contract. Um, and this is an essential claim uh, to, to our approach to continual contract structure, construction where a momentary crisis uh, may be used uh, not only to reinvent the social contract as such, but also to build uh, more uh, resilient, uh, democratic and uh, uh, active, uh, active uh, society. So therefore, capable of generation contractual resilience. This uh, time frame is very important to organize then our, our all our objectives and uh, work packages. So classically, the work package one deals with project coordination and uh, in the, uh, you know, the general management of the project. Uh, work package two, it's very important to develop the theory and uh, the model of, uh, of this project. So it builds the foundation of everything we're going to do uh, uh, across these three years. Um, then, uh, uh, on, on a more medium-term uh, dimension, World Package 3 deals with, uh, with the construction uh, and frictions of social contracts, so the idea will be to identify these moments and to critically think about that. World Package 2 is also included in this medium-term uh, dimension and deals with contemporary debates, spaces and challenges. Uh, of the social uh, contract. Here we have a specific task uh, related to the analysis of uh, parliamentary uh, elections at EU level, uh, on which Familia will provide some more, some more information. And uh, then uh, finally, within this midterm uh, dimension, work package three deals with uh, crisis and reconstruction. So how crisis creates space for the reconstruction of, uh, of, uh, uh, of social contracts. Finally, on the short-term dimension, we have World Package 6, with, uh, six which is led by, by SET, 
I said, and we are, we are going to build based on all this information and data, and data information collected and data uh, uh, analyzed scenarios for resilient social contracts for sustainable and democratic futures. So go, we go, do this exercise from going to the past, present, and then uh, imagining future and more resilient social contracts. Finally, World Package 7 does the dissemination and, uh, of course, the communication of the science we will be building uh, during these three years. As I said, the, the, the project looks specifically at uh, 11 case studies, eight of them inside uh, the European Union, so Portugal, Croatia, France, Germany, Sweden, Finland and uh, Bulgaria, and three outside uh, the European Union. Uh, which include Ukraine, Bos uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, uh, and, Tur and Turkey. And the goal with uh, with uh, uniting all these very uh, diverse uh, case studies, either from a geographical point of view, from a historical context, and from a political uh, reality, is actually to show that variation, but also commonalities between them. So all of these case studies has some past related to authoritarianism with some form of colonialism, uh, more strict uh, interpretations and forms of implementing social contracts. They then change to more democratic environments and they, uh, uh, after that, engage, integrate themselves into uh, something that is uh, contested so far, which is this idea of a new uh, transnational social contracts at the EU level, at the level of the European Union, which also has an impact at the national level. Some, for some of these countries, is already a reality. For other ones, they are in the process of joining this first form idea of the social contract, and we we'll want to see how that process follows. You want to follow up here? Yes, I, uh, according to my watch, I have like three minutes. Sorry. Uh, which is great. I mean, uh, this has been a very powerful uh, heuristic uh, tool, this social contract. So every time I've been thinking, uh, like hearing about like Sweden and burning cars in Sweden, I've been thinking, oh, the social contract. And, and uh, oftentimes I have really like uh, got into that. So so when we were writing the proposal, um, we were we were like thinking about uh, operationalizing my uh, formula of populism also in this. We kind of needed some theory in, <laughs> in the process of putting together this uh, this proposal. So I kind of abused my own uh, theoretical heuristic tool, and I wanted to share it with you because some of you you are uh, some of you are joining the conference and. And we'll be hearing my keynote here, then you can say, oh, but what about the social contract in the, in the questions at least? So, so thinking about like this inclusion and exclusion uh, in the process of writing the application, I thought, okay, this is somehow related to the stuff that I've been always working, so it's not like surprising that it would be coming to me quite intuitively to operationalize a different understanding of the social contract. Not just that it, this would be actually existing contract between people, but that, 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 the heuristic tool with which you generate a policy. Um, so the other thing I, I wanted to uh, mention still here is this uh, work package for because we are studying the uh, ET elections, which I'm junior, and we are uh, doing some data co collection on this. Um, Juha Herkman and I edited this book, which is coming out finally, slowly, slowly, on the uh, EP elections. This is now, I've just got it this week, the uh, uncorrected proof, which uh, unfortunately had a lot of errors, so we just did back. Um, but that, um, this was on uh, Twitter communication, that was the mode of uh, political communication in 2019. So for these elections I thought, okay, what is this new mode of communication? It seems to be audiovisual. So now we are uh, generating in, uh, at the University of Helsinki with my colleagues in data education, uh, helping us out this uh, method of audio audiovisual uh, data collection and analysis so that we would be, be able to deal with large data uh, masses of data uh, in a comparative way so it's not just the EU level but the actual national level where the elections are being held it's still held in nation state context, member states so, so we would be uh, 
gathering this data set, categorizing it in different ways for the different projects that are involved. And here, for the CO3, the important question is that what is the uh, source of contract basis? What is the thematic basis that is argued in, in these elections? And how uh, they are doing it? So whereas for pledge is more about what kind of emotions, emotional uh, mechanisms are uh, at play there. So uh, there are of course uh, some challenges to this. Uh, how to get hold of Instagram, YouTube and TikTok data. And we are trying to address it and it's great to have this Horizon project uh, and hopefully several projects that would be collaborating on this because it is also our demand to these platforms to, be, to give access to researchers and access that would be also getting like relevant data out. But like, in order to know what is relevant data or not, we also need to find other methods of, of finding out what is going on in, in uh, TikTok and Instagram, etc. We have been piloting this with the Finnish elections now. And uh, it's quite clear from our research that political videos are really uh, virally spreading on TikTok, not so much on Instagram, that was our comparison. Like in Instagram, we where in this, we were getting none of that, but TikTok was immediately the feeds were full of that. So it's quite promising, looking quite promising for our analysis. Maybe not for, uh, I mean, there are some, you know, black, the dark sides of, of this, but uh, for us doing this kind of research would be interesting. Yeah. Okay.